Hello and welcome to Infinity Wars. I'm Anna Wultus and today I'm going to be showing off a deck that I made. Now that being said, uh, Infinity Wars uh, is of course everybody's favorite, the superior uh, choice in, um, in card games, collectible card games. Uh, as it is indeed uh, a bit complicated in its mechanics, but you know what? I'm going to uh, load one of my decks here, and uh, this should be showing up on stream. So, um, I've of course got have a variety of decks here, uh, and in fact, you know what? I'll, I'll show off some of my decks, but uh, I'll show off the one that I really like here. Um, this one. Uh, it's called Pure Charge, and I'm going to be explaining to you what that means. So I'm going to select the deck, and uh, don't don't lag on me here. Okay, here we go. So, it's a 40 card deck uh, with 30 cards in command slot, of course, and uh, two Flame Dawn Purity, one uh, Sleeper's Purity, and what, what is, why is it called Pure Charge? That's because all 31 characters that I've put into this deck, every single one of them has charge, which means they automatically go into the um, offensive uh, or the assault zone when played. So it, it's a very heavy, a very strong rush deck. Uh, the only exception uh, for characters that don't have that are the command slots, which don't need to have uh, charge. So I decided to put them into uh, different roles. And these are all the charge cards that I have, in fact. So I put uh, every single card with charge uh, that I had into this deck just for the meme of it, okay? So this is a, a meme deck, uh, just so you know. So uh, this is Bromich, Field Commander. Of course, a great card to have in command. It's a, it's a great card to play on turn four because there are some low cost cards according to the curve. Wow, I don't have any three costs, but you know what, that doesn't matter. But I, I've got a lot of one costs. So uh, when I place down, let's say a, a, pun, a ton of Flame Dawn Aspirants, then on turn four, I drop Bromich and then turn five, I win, uh, which is, I think, the mode for winning with this deck uh, if the opponent doesn't defend of course now if the opponent does choose to defend it might go a, a couple turns longer it really depends on how things go so anyway it's it's great because it gives plus two plus two uh, so and it has a, a 10 power which means that let's say you've got four of the cards that um, an additional 18 power on the board which is quite a lot to put down on a turn four. Um, and of course I also have a Baryon, the Hammer of Dawn, uh, who is indestructible when in the assault zone. So if the enemy uh, puts down a, a ton of low level uh, guys to clog up my assault zone, I can use this guy at the front of the assault zone and he'll slowly clear him out. But he doesn't have... He, he, he doesn't have um, Unstoppable, which is what I really would need, because Unstoppable, if he kills a character, he keeps going and attacks again, which is something I, I would like, but I don't really... That's not what this deck is geared for. Uh, and, of course, uh, the Disease Zombie, which is a one cost, so a great card to put down on turn one. Uh, and, of course, target character your opponent controls becomes poison, taking one damage at the end of each turn. So if the enemy has a nice... Uh, interesting card in the command slot. That's what I'll do. I drop down the diseased zombie and I hit and I'll hit him with that. Uh, but the rest of the deck plays very straightforward. So uh, th the reason I've got one sleepers is because is so that I can put down infested night, which is wh uh, what I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But anyway, flame dawn aspirant one cost charge four two. Uh, I've got 12 of them in here, <laughs> um, so it's uh, certainly an, an important part. If I've got nothing else to play, these things go very well. And In fact, sometimes playing two of these is better than playing some of the two costs. Um, Reckless Zealot, charge 10 power, uh, but the problem is they the opponent gains an additional maximum resource, so I want to be careful. Uh, I'll, I'll need to see whether or not it's a type of opponent that this would work well with. Some opponents, it doesn't work well with. But it's a it's a reckless play, but it's a good way to win. Especially if you save those up, and then uh, you play them uh, in a turn to get uh, the, uh, the amount of damage you need to win. 
and that's what they're really good for. So anyway, uh, also, uh, I've, I've got two of those. The reason they're in separate slots is because uh, one of them is tradable, the other one isn't. Uh, then I've got uh, Flaved On Hound, uh, which has charge, of course. <laughs> they all do. But it's, it's, an, it's a good two-cost charge if I don't have two Flaved On Aspirants to put down. It's, it's a great play on turn two. Uh, Fleeting Footman, charge in 8-4 charge, so it's, it's a bit more powerful, but uh, the downside is that uh, he can't attack characters. Um, so that means that uh, he, he's not good when I play him out alone. He's usually good if I uh, play him out with something. Uh, Ember Starter, charge, multi-strike 2. So he charges and he hits twice, uh, six damage, turn four. It's a great turn four if I don't want to play Bromich or maybe a turn five or turn six if it comes to that. Great turn five though, that, that's usually a, a great time to play that. Uh, Duke Rushington the third technically is not a charge card. He doesn't actually have that property, but at the start of combat, if deployed, he will move to the assault zone so he's okay I, I i i guess i was mistaken he's not an actual charge card but he essentially is essentially um and infested knight uh, when he attacks his power becomes equal to the number to double the number of characters in my graveyard so, so this is good to play if it if the game ends up lasting longer than expected and the opponent is actually taking care of a lot of my uh, units uh, a lot of my characters and they're maybe do using mass death or something I can pull this out and it, it'll have a very large amount of power and hit really hard uh, of course another ember starter uh, same issue with it being tradable and non tradable I think um, and harbinger of light a nice five cost um a return target deployed character to the support zone so it's a really great way to get around defenses or to maybe uh, kick an enemy off of the assault zone if, if he's attacking hard and i don't like it now of course uh, there are some that have untouchable in which case that really sucks because uh, uh untouchable is really hard to deal with with anything really but uh, anyway blazing swarmer only is only in here because he's got charge but uh, he, he actually is weaker and his effect, uh, his ability uh, uh, is weaker as well because I don't have other insectoids. There's no real synergy, but it's still a card to play if I've got uh, five and uh, I need to play something. So anyway, uh, five resources. So anyway... Uh, v or Vis, the Furious, uh, un a unique character, uh, charge, when I deploy her, um, I may overcharge it any number of times and gain additional attacks uh, for each time I overcharge. So this is, of course, uh, a more of a late game card. I, I usually don't expect to be using this one, but it's a great way to maybe clear out... Uh, an opponent if if i still have cards in my hand which i probably won't because i'll play them like crazy uh bombard a nice one cost for damage uh always good to have um the resolute initiative all characters you control cannot be killed from non-damaged sources so it's if i maybe expect someone to pull out a mass death or if uh, there's something that deals damage to everything that is pretty good to put down and uh, Burning Prejudice uh, is a good way to get rid of an opponent that uses a, a lot of uh, unlimited characters or uses the same type of character a lot. Sort of like if, if I put down a ton of Flame Dawn Aspirants, uh, someone can use this on me, and that's actually pretty good. Um, Call the Crusade, of course, no reason not to put in this here. <laughs> um, getting uh, free four twos with charge is always good right on out onto the field and eaten by zombies i've got two of those uh, why not because it uh, takes an opponent's uh takes an opponent's characters so it's always good to have and uh Bromich's banner because it it means more damage and that's essentially what this is all about so i'm, I'm going to play a quick uh i'm in the middle of a, a rift run here but i'm not gonna do that right now 
I'm gonna. Oh, ah, uh, didn't mean to click click campaign. I meant to. I, I was I was gonna play a quick game against uh, one of the bots uh, just to show you how it works. Um, because let's be honest, most players have a pretty uh, uh, a, a gimmick of some sort. So let me put put the bots uh, descendants of dragon. Why not? And I'll just use my uh, pure charge and select deck, and a, and the game is starting. And also, this game isn't played very much, so I don't really have a good chance of uh, finding someone to actually do it. Now, the the big question here is disease zombie or flamed on aspirant. Disease zombie. Will is always a good play because both of them deal five five damage so they're both good uh, but this one deals one to something specific and I want to get rid of Dowd now he's not going to die by the end of this probably not because I'm going to kill him in five turns if uh, everything goes according to plan but uh, of course things don't go according to plan uh, okay so what I can do here is I can either do a Flamed On Aspirant, which is a safe option, or I can play a Reckless Zealot and uh, uh, and entirely ruin my curve by making their curve better. Uh, but uh, because I, I didn't actually get a lot of low costs. Oh, snap. That's not what I wanted. Uh, there, let's put that down just so that I still have more damage on the board and end planning there. Okay, they didn't put down anything good. Okay, so I'm still dealing more damage. Okay, uh, two Flamed On Aspirants on the third turn. That's uh, a good play. Next turn, I'll put down Bromage. Okay, so the enemy finally gets something down on the board, but I've already got a ton of, ton of stuff going for me. So now, uh, I, I don't necessarily want to put this one in front, just in case he puts down another... Well, no, he's not going to put one down from his hand. It doesn't have vigilance, so I'll just put that down there, and we'll see what, what pulls out. All right, see, 40 damage on turn four, and if everything goes according to plan, we'll get a nice turn five kill. So what should I put down... I can put down... Well, no, that's not going to be useful since my graveyard is empty. So, uh... Putting down... A nice... Uh... Six damage. Now, I don't want to put this at the front because I know he's going to put Balanced Warrior on here, which is going to ruin it. So, I'm actually going to put it more towards the back so he gets the opportunity to actually attack twice. So, uh... Uh, this should be a win uh, unless he does this uh, but that's fine okay okay he's he's clearing me out but I still have I still have my boy and I still also have two more I have another ember starter and my flame dawn hound so I'll put both of those down and it's essentially game over. There's no way he can beat this. Okay. He, he pulls out another invincible defender and he's dead. There you go. And that's essentially how this is meant to go. Now, of course, if the opponent... So I, I won on turn six. If the opponent, of course, has uh, something that they can spam into the, into the defense zone, then, of course, things go a bit different. But as you can see, I even went up against... Uh, the, the most uh, defense focused uh, faction and I still uh, went pretty well and of course against an actual player that's gonna go very different because players are a lot better but this is just to demonstrate generally the the play order and cards that I would usually have so uh, anyway uh, let's take another look at the cards so I'm not gonna play another game i'm just going to leave it at that if you actually want me to play games uh, against other players uh please leave a comment in the comment section below and i'll do that i'll just show you a couple of decks so um so that was my pure charge deck 
and I'm gonna show you something else here. The the no car, no char, no care deck actually is what it uh, is pronounced because it means no character. So I'm gonna select that and the game's gonna lag and here we go. Okay, so of course, Daoud Sage of Strength, uh, plus free health on all characters. Great effect to have, so uh, great ability, sorry. And all, all three of my command cards have abilities. And why did everything suddenly turn a different color? I, I don't know. I, I maybe... I did something wrong. Cancel. Okay. But anyway, this is a, a great deck. So I can, on turn one, what I do is I pay one and I create a 2-2 two, uh, two, two Rita's Guard. On turn two, I can get a Flame Dawn Aspirant with Alita Immortal Traveler who can pick uh, out of the unlimited character group uh, with a plus one cost. So uh, a Flame Dawn Aspirant costs one, so it's gonna cost two doing this. Uh, on turn three, I can strengthen everything. But of course, that's usually not how it's gonna go. I'm usually not gonna use this on turn three because I usually have something to play by then. Because believe it or not, I actually have a very low favored power curve. So I only have four other characters and they're all unique characters. And that's why it's called no character uh, because there are uh, very few characters in this and it mostly focuses on uh, creating small uh, tokens and uh, and flamed on aspirants to really take down the enemy. So, of course, this is a counter to the morale play. Um, in case somebody tries to morale me, that's what I do. Uh, then, of course, ni some nice card draw is always good to have, and uh, some some good uh, pay to damage is always good, and also pay to do morale, extra morale damage as well. Uh, which isn't the best with the cards I've got here, but it still uh, works uh, pretty well. So, of course, I have 36 abilities, and that's that's the entire rest of of the deck. So, of course, a recycle in case I need something back out of my graveyard. A couple of grave robs uh, in case somebody's playing sleepers because I I don't like when my enemies are playing sleepers. Um, uh, so, some nice easy for damage uh, siphon structure uh, zero cost but uh, does uh, whatever much damage I want it to lightning blast <laughs> more damage hubris of the strong turns my enemies into one ones death ray of course kills heat wave to uh, really do some general damage uh, the perils of command get rid of command characters spirit armor Gives uh, a little bit of a boost to characters. Uh, Lance of Jinhai in case there's some flying. Uh, although that's the only one I've got. It really was to really pad out the deck to get it to 40 cards. Let's be honest here. Dawid's Protection gets more uh, uh, defense on all my characters. Um, suppress, just as a quick trick in case I need to use it. I, I don't really usually end in a, end up in a, in, in a situation where I specifically want to, but there may be a chance for that. And Vigil is of course good because it, it can help me, but it can also help me get rid of an enemy who's blocking up uh, uh, the enemy's assault zone. And of course, uh, Yuan Shi's Wrath four damage all around great stuff and uh, fortress uh, repair is a, is always good so this is a, a very tricksy one uh, really focusing on uh, this is actually the key card in this if, if I lose this card uh, if I lose Alita Immortal Traveler the game's practically over because I all all I can play then is 2-2 two, two Rita's guards, and I don't really have that much to buff them up, so... Uh... <laughs> so, it's it's a pretty risky play, but it's it's another meme deck. The meme is that there's little to no characters in it. Uh, let's uh, find, find an actual meme deck. Uh, as you can see, this is the meme right here, this this character as a commander. So, uh, let's, uh, let's show everyone what this is. Okay. Okay, let's show everyone what the meme is. Okay, so Enya of the Endless Possibilities, what does she do? 
if Enya is a commander, she counts as every faction. Okay, so that's one meme. And if Enya is a commander, you may not have more than one copy of any card in your deck. So that's the other meme. It, it's essentially uh, the, the grab bag. And in addition to that, in, instead of making myself uh, another double faction purity on something, I also got another neutral faction, <laughs> Elisa Immortal Traveler, just for the extra meme in case I want to have more than one of, of certain cards, and uh, Flame Dawn Footman uh, as a good turn one play, because why not? And uh, it's actually pretty even curve. Uh, with uh, some nice turn 5 plays, turn 4 plays. So uh, what, what do we actually have here? 44 characters and 6 abilities. So it's a very character focused. So of course I've got my Survival Swarmer, as well as my Brutal Swarmer, which gives other Swarmers uh, plus 3 plus 3. And I can get more Swarmers using Elita Mortal Traveler, more Survival Swarmers that is. And in addition to that, uh, I, I have my Flame Swarmer in here somewhere. I think I do. I should do, if I don't, that, uh, actually I don't, which is interesting. Maybe I should replace something and put that in, because, uh, yeah, I don't have the, the flame variety, uh, the, the flame dawn one, uh, what's it called? Uh, hide unknown cards, Let, let's be honest. The blazing swarmer, that's something I should have in here, but I don't, uh, I do have the Ascending Swarmer, which gives all my Swarmers flying, but uh, the Blazing Swarmer would be a, a great combo in here as well. But anyway, uh, besides that, I also have Field Engineer, uh, is a, a, always a great card to have. Uh, of course, uh, if you can put it in a defense zone, if the defense zone is too risky, then it's worthless. Defense Golem. No power, but it has reach, so it's, it's great for clogging up the defense zone. Of course, uh, uh, if you use, um, th th there's a card that equalizes health and power, so it, it becomes suddenly really strong, and that's good to play. So anyway, brings life by passing a, a classic. Um, uh, you gain one extra resource for the turn, which is great to have. Swift Hunter has haste, so that's always a, a good card to put down. A Matriarch, and uh, it is good because it heals all cards in the support zone and it is a pretty strong card as well wreckful walrus uh you can destroy enemy artifacts which is always good to have uh alita mortal caretaker uh pay one a target non-artificial character gains plus four plus zero i don't have a lot of artificials in there so that's actually very useful uh plus zero plus four sorry uh, cannon fodder, a great zero cost haste, uh, can be buffed up though. Uh, kinetically overloaded drone, uh, a nice way to maybe put down early on and uh, play down later on as pretty strong cards. Summon of a deep, another way to get 4-4 uh, demons, which is uh, a pretty good thing to have uh, to get a bit of a consistent uh, flow. A battlefield scavenger. That's a, a good thing to have to get some nice card draw. Acolyte of a Crypt, if I end up killing a lot of enemies. The Roar Death Worshipper, before I end up killing a lot of enemies. Candid, uh, get more cards. Rita, of course, useful. The Roar Kidnapper, uh, gets rid of an enemy. Um, Alita, some direct damage. Another Flame Dawn Aspirant for a quick play. And uh, fl a lot of Flame Dawn in here, uh, because I love Charge. Uh, Defiant Footman is also good. Uh, because it boosts the assault zone by dying, which is good. So I put this one in my uh, um, my defense. Reckless Zealot, of course. Uh, Duelist, two lives. Type Collector is is actually pretty good because it makes enemies more expensive. Bromich boosts your strength. Uh, Ember Starter, charge, uh, uh, multi strike two. Uh, oh, I do have Blazing Swarmer. Okay, good. And uh, Harbinger of Light, of course, another charge. Uh, Alberian is indestructible. Um, and uh, we, we already talked about this one. Trickster Monkey uh, forces the enemy to uh, move to the defense zone. Chef give, gives a little boost to everyone. 
uh, Invincible Defender. Uh, why not? It's always good to have a Vigilance in case you need it. That would say just Strength because that's always good to have. Echo of the Battlefield. So anyway, uh, Shield Bearer, Steadfast Protector, Infectious Zombie, good to infect. Um, Evolving Parasite, which is actually a very good one to have. Um, it essentially steals an opponent's character. Um, Soldier of Purity, Leader of a Charge, Rescue Angel, and Ascending Swarmer, and of course, Grave Rob, Heat Wave, Perils of Command, Resolute Initiative, Caltrops, and Call of a Crusade! Yeah! So, uh, it, it's very versatile. <laughs> Jack of all trades, essentially. You can do anything you want, and, and that's what really uh, Alita Immortal Traveler is for. But anyway, uh, and any other decks I really wanted to show, um, I've got my uh, low cost, <laughs> another meme deck, uh, low cost, I essentially have only one and two costs, so it, it's very fast, fast and loose, but uh, it, a lot of Flame Dawn, a lot of Invincible Defenders, very strong here, in fact, even, even the ones I've got up here are low cost. Uh, and some unending drones and support drones, which, uh, oops, uh, go well with Secluded Constructor to, to boost up my cards in case I need them to be more powerful. But essentially, it's uh, a, a bit of a rush, but not exactly. It, it's a meme. All my dicks are memes, okay? Don't let your memes be dreams. So on that note, thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all next time on a Will Over and out.